In October 2006, 50-year-old American police officer Donald Rene Ramirez committed suicide while in police custody in Cambodia. Ramirez had been arrested and thrown in a local jail cell for having sex with a 14-year-old girl. Once more, the repercussions of facing the outside world were too much for him to handle. But whatever the outcome of convicted pedophiles, their victims are psychologically scarred for life. The United Nations estimates that two million children globally are forced into prostitution and pornography each year. The sexual exploitation of children is fueled by depraved sex predators, criminals who prey on the most vulnerable of victims, putting a price tag on their innocence. In places where money is scarce, these deviants gather forging a network of criminals who profit from the demand and supply of children. They are among Asia's most repulsive criminals. September 5th, 2010, police raid a guest house on the outskirts of Phnom Penh to find three underage Cambodian girls with a 50-year-old British national, a former UK government advisor. Present at the scene was the head of the anti-human trafficking police and agents from APLE, a local organization that investigates and brings pedophiles to justice. When we went into the guest house, he was with three very young girls eight, nine, 10, and 11, sitting on his bed, ready for sex. Having escaped the clutches of Cambodian laws before, Leach is fearless of authorities during the arrest. Your name? Mogi. Mogi Moo. Sure? Mogi. Mogi. Mogi Moo. He did not look frightened, he did not look scared at all because, to what I can say, he was experienced and because he believed he would come into this situation one day. Leach had been under APLE investigation before, in 2005, when he allegedly sexually abused young girls while posing as a doctor at an orphanage. He was acquitted by the courts due to lack of evidence. This time around, investigators are determined to gather enough evidence to convict him of his crimes. Their immediate source of evidence is the girls. In many cases that the victim was actually not cooperative because they wanted to secure financial uh, relationship with their own abuser. ហើយមានអ្នកនេះគឺវាមានបណ្ដាញពួកធ្នាក់គ្នាជឿគឺវាមេឃ្យល់ដែល 
Leach paid $1,500 US dollars for a sex contract with three underage girls for a period of one week. Before catching him red-handed, APLE agents conduct a thorough surveillance on Leach, following intel on a child prostitution ring two days prior. Agents witness Leach being driven around town by a local driver. The suspect purchased candies and lingerie before going to Kyansve district, a place known for its sex establishments. Leach eventually leads the undercover agents to this guest house just outside Phnom Penh, where the raid and arrest take place. He made a deal with Tupim and the mother of three girls, age under 15. Okay? So the mother agreed to sell her own three girls to the Pim, who then transferred the, two girl, the three girls to this man for one big sexual abuse contract. Leach's accomplices were also arrested, including his driver, the owner of the guest house, and the girl's mother. Leach was charged with three counts of purchasing sex with underage girls. According to prosecutors, Leach tried several times to delay his trial, often faking illness on his court dates. But on the 8th of September, 2011, Michael Julian Leach was finally convicted to 12 years imprisonment and forced to pay compensation money to his victims. The sexual exploitation of children occurs around the world, a crime that crosses all borders and afflicts all societies. Cambodia, among the world's poorest countries, is a breeding ground for the child sex trade. The country's Minister of Women's Affairs estimated that around 30,000 Cambodian children were forced into prostitution in 2005. It is one of the global hotspots selling commercial sex with the young and attracting pedophiles from all over the world. Some traveler from the Western country actually coming here with purposes of engaging uh, uh, sexually with children. So they actually operate in a way that they believe they can find here in the street. They believe that they can buy uh, a child for sex. According to Agent Sela, there are two ways a pedophile will hunt. Some make direct contact with children or families on the streets, while others use the help of a local establishment or middlemen. These underground dealers hide under layers of secrecy that make them extremely difficult to bring to justice. <laughs> The relentless sex trade has made Cambodia an increasingly dangerous place for the young. As predators of children sink further into depravity, even a shelter for abandoned street kids can be turned into a child's nightmare. So now we have cases of people who probably run an NGO or work in an NGO to get a set of children. April 21st, 2010, police and child protection agents searched the home of 66-year-old Cornelius Shamalo in Sihanoukville, Cambodia. The Dutchman is the director of a local orphanage in the coastal town. I object that you can, because there is no, nothing with the children, there's nothing to do with the no, no, children. Authorities raid his apartment after three boys from the home complained of sexual abuse. When he was out with this four to seven kid outside, he was playing in an appropriate way by touching, by hugging, by kissing, by actually playing around their genital part. The Dutchman was convicted in February 2011 for indecent acts against two underage boys. Under Cambodian law, 
Indecency against minors that excludes sexual intercourse carries a maximum sentence of three years. Shamala was sentenced to 18 months in prison and served only half of it. Agent Sela and his team have requested for prosecutors to oppose the court's light sentence. Their disappointment stems from the possibility that Shamalo may strike again after his early release. APLE is just one of many child protection agencies putting pressure on the prosecution of pedophiles. Sex predators who are aware of such scrutiny have developed a new mode of operation to escape detection. They believe that they have to change their way. So now pedophile uh, work as a fundraising for the NGO for him to get access to children. Such an operation means that pedophiles get to establish long-term relationships with their victims, manipulating children to unknowingly submit to sexual abuse. Running an orphanage to get access to children shows how increasingly brazen foreign pedophiles have become. And when the profile of the typical Western pedophile is rich, advanced in his years, and retired, they often think they are above the law. In one of the pedophile cases specifically of the Dutch National, we were actually offered 100,000 US dollar to withdraw uh, from the legal case. I don't like that, huh? Are you making an appointment with me? And there, he also tried to locate our office in order to make a deal. We did not accept the deal. But in a poverty-stricken country like Cambodia, cash is often the ultimate temptation, even if it means selling your own kids. These shadowy businessmen also lurk in brothels, using children to lure customers. Authorities say families in rural areas of Cambodia are often tricked into giving away their children for what they think are decent paying jobs, only to have their young ones end up working in brothels. 24-year-old Chai Verne was born into a poor family plagued by debt. At only 13 years old, she was sold off by her aunt. Instead of washing dishes and earning an honest income, Chai Verne was tortured into sexual slavery. She was forced to serve clients every day and was brutally punished if she refused. With no way out, her nightmare only got worse. Sadly, her story is not unique. Thousands of children are victimized by the same deceit every year. 20-year-old Srey Pick was forced into prostitution at a young age after running away from home to escape her sexually abusive father. While living on the streets, she met a lady who offered help. But instead of being sent to a safer place, Srey was sold to a brothel. <laughs> Local men believe that sleeping with underage virgins will bring them increased vitality and untold health benefits. Profiting from this myth are underground syndicates that sell children to rich, primarily Asian men 
the price tag for a virgin can go up to 1,000 US dollars. Some people, they believe that if they have sex with a young virgin girl, they are free from HIV AIDS. Help them to have a strong energy, bring them good luck, long life with a uh, good luck with a business and a healthy, wealthy, something like that. This is some people, they believe in the so this is one of the factors that the rich people, businessmen, they are the men looking for the girl as young as possible. When caught, the disgrace faced by the criminal can be overwhelming. And fearing a lifelong campaign of hatred against them, many choose an easier way out. <laughs> Convicted pedophiles are often punished with public humiliation. These criminals not only incur the wrath of their victims and the general public, but also fellow prison inmates. Even the hardest criminals are known to be intolerant of crimes against children. Behind bars, pedophiles are thrown into the lowest rungs of the prison hierarchy, facing intense harassment from other inmates, and in some cases, becoming the target for violent murders. It is no wonder that when caught red-handed by police, many pedophiles are desperate for any way out. In early August 2006, children's screams echo from a house in a Phnom Penh neighborhood, raising suspicions. The home belongs to 60-year-old German school teacher, Karl Heinz Henning Opitz. Word of neighbors' complaints soon reach APLE, an independent organization of law enforcement agents combating child sex crimes. Our agent uh, went to the scene and tried to identify the girl in the home. So we went upstairs and we tried to observe from a distance of his home and we could see some kind of camera flash. We could see voice of young children laughing, screaming, something like that. Undercover surveillance reveals underage girls being escorted to his house by Vietnamese adults. The children suspiciously spend three to four hours inside the house during each visit. Agents follow the escorts to their home addresses. After questioning neighbors, they discover that the suspects are part of a child trafficking ring. It was time for the police to step in. ចង់ពេលហ្នឹងក៏យើងធ្វើការតាមដានរហូតរហូតដល់ថ្ងៃមួយគឺយើងសម្រេចថាយើងនឹងប្រវត្តិការចង់ពេលដែលគេបណ្
Opitz is not the only arrested pedophile who has tried to take his own life. Child sex victim Srey, who spent her childhood forced into prostitution, can still recall the trauma. <laughs> Often victims of, of those kind of sexual abuses experience nightmares and flashbacks and those common effects of trauma that are often associated with post-traumatic stress disorder. That can often lead to lots of issues around um, feeling a sense of safety in, in the community as they grow older. Um, a lack of trust for adults, particularly for child sex um, trafficking survivors who were perhaps sold into that situation by their families. After escaping her ordeal, Srey was sent to a shelter where she lives with other victims who share similar histories. The Somali Mom Foundation helps these girls to reintegrate back into society after their traumatic past. A crucial part of the healing process for victims of sexual abuse is to know that the perpetrators have been arrested and convicted. Opitz was sentenced to 28 years in a Cambodian prison on charges of human trafficking and child pornography. The conviction means another successful mission for APLE. Over the course of eight years, they have helped bring to justice over 150 sex offenders in Cambodia. I would say this is where still a long way to go. I cannot say the, the problem is increased or decreased. I would say that the problem still exists. After local and international pressure, the law of suppression of human trafficking and sexual exploitation came to fruition in 2008. This new law gives police more power to investigate and arrest sex offenders and has put in place more juvenile protection police units. Backed by new legislation, authorities have also intensified their clampdown on child sex offenders in the country. Hundreds have been arrested but only time will tell if such improved measures are enough to deter future child sex bandits. But I network again, network, Jung Pu Jung Sa, Kang Kneel, and Bipu Jut Jumuinung, Pup, Junkal Kotong Ono, Tang Naknope, Tang Nakrape, but I need to make no clear, Pu Jun Kampung Prime and Bipu Jut, the Ockney, I Ock Nature number, come on me and the Luni.